Hello everyone. Uh, today's video, uh, I have two goals. Uh, the first goal is to demonstrate how to compute a uh, fast Fourier transform using the NumPy FFT function in Python. So I kind of assume that you know what is a fast Fourier transform. So today I'm focusing on how to calculate in uh, Python using NumPy module. Uh, second goal is to plot the frequency spectrum of the uh, output of the FFT using matplotlib. So I hope you find this uh, video helpful. So we do it in three steps. So first, we will uh, construct a time domain signal. So this is the, the input signal. We are going to compute the Fourier transform. So normally it can be a, a, a sound signal or any kind of time domain, a sensor signal, any kind of time domain signal, right? So second step, uh, we will uh, perform FFT, right? So late, lastly, we will plot the both the time domain signal and the frequency spectrum. First thing we do, we try to con construct a time domain signal. Let's say we have a uh, sampling system. So we have sampling frequency of uh, 2000 kilohertz. So this is the sampling frequency. So we're going to build a time domain signal. So so this T step, this T step uh, is the sample time interval. We need a input signal frequency let's say for the moment we assume that i have a sine wave signal an ideal sine wave signal with a 100 hertz uh, frequency so this is my uh, signal frequency okay so then we will so this this is the uh, number of samples of the signals okay so then we need to construct uh, a, a list for the time timestamps. So we use a numpy linear space uh, function to create. So it will be from time zero to t step. Okay. So we we'll have n data points. Oh, I've forgotten to import the import module. So first thing you do is you need to import. Uh, numpy as np. Uh, later you also need the uh, matplotlib uh, okay, to plot. So so this is the time steps. Uh, time steps of the time domain signal. So we compute FFT. There is a frequency interval for each uh, frequency bin. So if you know the theory, it's basically uh, the Sampling frequency divided by the number of samples, right? So, if you don't know why, I recommend you to uh, do online research. So this is the frequency interval. Similarly, we need to because we need to plot the uh, frequency spectrum. So we need to create a x axis for the frequency spectrum, which is a list of uh, frequencies. So again, we use the NumPy linear space function to create this. So we can do similar things like the timestamps, except that we change this to the frequency intervals. Uh, okay, this is a frequency steps. Okay. So lastly, we just need to uh, create a signal. So we're going to create a sine wave signal. So I'll call it Y is our signal, input time domain signal. So I have an amplitude of one, a sine function. So I need a frequency of a uh, frequency of one hundred hertz, right? So I will just compute that to two times pi, two times pi times the uh, frequency and the time steps. So this will be our signal. So basically what I've done is I created a, a time series with the interval of t steps. And then I 
created a sine wave using the numpy sine wave function. So let me plot that for you to quickly show. So here I plot a uh, one cycle of the time domain signal. So let's do this. Plots, okay. For the moment, we just have a uh, one row and one column for the plot. Okay. So we simply plot the time versus the signal. Okay. You convert this into an integer. Okay. So let's run. Oh, I forgot to show show the plot here. So now you can see uh, I've created a time domain signal. So the x axis is the time, y axis is a signal signal. So I'll probably clear. So now you can see those are the discrete time data points here. Those dots. Okay, wait a moment. Okay, so next we will perform the FFT uh, using the NumPy FFT function. So it's actually quite easy. So it's simply using uh, NumPy FFT, FFT. So you just simply pass in the input time domain signal here. So the details about this function, you can uh, refer to this website for the NumPy FFT function. Right, let's go back. So this will give you, so x will be a series of uh, complex numbers. So that's an, the, the definition of the FFT. So you get a complex number as the output. So for now, we are only interested in the magnitude of the, of the FFT output. So you just do an mpy, you just take the absolute value of that. Uh, also, you need to normalize the, the magnitude. We need to normalize the magnitude by the number of samples here. So in this case, it's basically n. Okay. So now, technically, we can plot. We can plot the frequency domain also. So here, I just need to add. I will need to add uh, more one one more plot. So let's say, let's do it this way. So I'm gonna have two rows. So. Okay, so here we plot the frequency, the the uh, FFT output, which is FFT uh, magnitude versus frequency. So now you can plot. So you can see now you basically what you are seeing is the frequency domain in the in the second plot here. So the x axis is the is the frequency, and y axis is the uh, magnitude. But it's not that correct yet. So in fact, you can see that. If you know about the sampling theorem, so so if you have a sampling frequency of 1,000, 2,000 hertz, so you're you're able to uh, reconstruct your signal below half of this uh, frequency, which is one 1,000 hertz. Uh, it's called the Nyquist Nyquist uh, sampling theorem. So what we we'll do here, we will uh, do more small modifications. So we are only going to plot half of the frequency of the sampling frequency. So we will uh, create another x-axis for the frequency so it's going to be uh, from 0 to half half of that okay into plus so I already know that you need to convert it into integer because it's a Python list uh, index and you need to plot the okay x magnitude for the plotting so it's basically two times the original one so max max so one point one note need is at DC component we do need to multiply by two so we just need to divide divide it by two so I am not going to explain why because I'm not really good at that so but just to say you need to do this. Otherwise, you end up having a wrong DC magnitude, as you will see later. D 
dc component to okay so now we can plot the proper plot proper frequency domain signal so now you can see I'm only plotting up to 0 to 100 1000 Hertz and my signal frequency is actually at uh, 100 Hertz so the magnitude is 1 which is exactly what you see here so my signal frequency is 100 Hertz and the magnitude is 1 to get more uh, fine resolution in the frequency domain uh, you just need to increase the number of samples let's say I have 10 cycles of samples now you can see this is my time domain signal and this is the uh, frequency spectrum so you can see at 100 Hertz here I have a magnitude of 1 let's say I have uh, my signal has two frequencies for example I have a uh, another frequency which is let's say three times the three times the input frequency original input frequency let's say 300 Hertz so I multiply three here so it's probably easier to understand if I put it here and I have magnitude of a, of a 4 for example so if I run this so you can see that this is my time domain signal it has two frequencies and it's clearly shown that on the frequency domain at 100 Hertz you have a component of a magnitude of 1 and at 300 Hertz here you have a magnitude of a 4 so again we can add a DC component let's say I have a DC signal of a 2 so I run it again now you can see the DC which is a 0 frequency here has a magnitude of 2 remember just now I have divided 2 back in the, in, in the previous uh, uh, calculation here because in DC you don't need to multi multiply by 2 here so I divide the 2 back here so lastly let's uh, try to make the plot uh, more beautiful so we will, first we will uh, put some labels on the axis so set the label x label so the first is will be the uh, the time so the unit is a second and uh, label for the second for the frequency spectrum will be a frequency so it will be in Hertz and okay you can turn on the grids also right. see again so now you can see this uh, you can see you see this uh, X label here and I turn on the grid Okay, so let's try to uh, set the limit of the axis also just to make it even better so let's say just to limit that try again oh, what's happening okay so this should be x2 here yeah, now you can see I've limited the, the x, x axis so it looks a bit better so I'm going to re remove this uh, second frequency here so I can have a single frequency right so you have a single frequency look look at that okay you can see the label here cannot be seen so let's make a change so I believe you can try this uh, tight layout function here here we go so now this is the final result so basically we have uh, created created a time con time domain signal which is here and we have compute the FFT then plot the frequency spectrum here so I think it looks quite good I hope this video is helpful to you. Uh, thank you for your time. Bye-bye.